Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Jayadeep Sharangi, Jogesh Chandra Choudhury College, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. In the first part, we will discuss King Arthur and this part is written by Dr. Mohua Bhomik, who teaches English at Derosio College, Kolkata. Friends, in this part, we will discuss the role of King Arthur, who is happens to be an important figure in Arthurian legends and stories, literature revolving around him. Geoffrey of Monmouth, Geoffrey of Monmouth was was responsible for making Arthur gain European recognition by the publication of Historia Regum Britanni, an important book of the time. The genre of Arthurian romances was initiated by Cretian. You have some pictures on the screen. The Arthurian romances with the introduction of the Arthurian cycle of romances, there was a shift in focus from King Arthur to the other characters as Lancelot. The Knights of the Round Table, the Knights of the Round Table as you see on the picture was an immensely popular theme among the French Arthurian romances. Another important stock theme was Holy Grail. See the picture on the screen. There was an introduction to the themes of the Holy Grail and the Fisher King with a gradual deduction of inter interest in King Arthur. So, with this knowledge, we come to Middle English prose for part 2. Friends, we have had discussions on Middle English romances. We have had also discussions on King Arthur and the Round Table. From the input, we can also think over the how the prose literature evolved during the Middle English period. In this particular module, we have specific interest. The interest is to discuss the Middle English prose with reference to contributions under different heads. And we are also going to evaluate how this Middle English prose contributed to the growth and development of literature during the Middle English period. Hello friends, just look on the screen. There are three books displayed on Middle English prose. Friends, to start with, let us discuss on Catherine Group. The earliest evidence that we have regarding the Middle English prose that takes us to the Catherine group. What is Catherine group? It consists of five writings. It includes lives of three saints, a treatise and a homily. That is the saga of the saints or religious mission. It is the earliest Middle English prose as we have documented so far and it is immediately after the Norman conquest and possibly we have now fair idea about the implication of the Norman conquest in the year 1066 AD. It also includes Hali Medihad and Salus Wade. Now, what is Hali Mediad and Salus Wade? These are attempts to glorify virginity in opposition to marriage. Some of the seminal issues related to marriage and virginity and maidenhood have been discussed. Saulus Verde, it is an allegory of the house symbolizing the body. So, we have the we have the symbolic reference of a particular house 
that talks about different parts of the body as well. So, we have fair bit of idea about the symbolic representation through language. The most important contributor of middle English prose is of course, Ancren Riul. Ancren Riul. Ancren Riul is one of the important contributors who really considerably worked for middle English prose. One of the seminal works of middle English prose didactic and devotional that means, all these works are didactic have specific interest to propagate and they have devotional interest as well. Now, look at the next point the historical documentation. If we look into anchor and rule it gives you the history of the time, the sociological proposition of the time the admirable and unorthodox personality of the writer. The writer is admirable and also he is a detached observer of life. Walter Hilton, Walter Hilton's specific work called scale of perfection. Scale of perfection is a mammoth work and it is an important document of English prose style as we have Sidman, Senaulf and different prose writers like Alfred, Alfred in the middle English period. Now, we have Walter Hilton's scale of perfection that gives you an insight into middle English prose. Next comes North gets Abiti Enwet. Abiti Enwet is a didactic work again with a written for purpose for didactic purpose and it is important for linguistic perspectives. And if you can read between there is certain interesting note attached to it. Now, John Wycliffe the most important contributor of middle English prose the John Wycliffe and his contributions are enormous. The responsible for the first complete translation of the Bible into English and possibly by the time you understand the implication of the first translator of Bible into English. That means, the holy book came to be interpreted and understood in English. So, it was historical by all means. Though the entire translation was not by done by himself, it was definitely inspired and influenced and shaped by John Wycliffe. It is marked by simplicity and pointedness. There is hardly any unnecessary comments or authorial introduction to it. It becomes the source of inspiration and cause of the Lollard movement. They questioned and rejected many of the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, friends, let us discuss the contribution of John Mandeville. John Mandeville is one of the important travel writers of the time is a best known travel writer. His important piece is the travels of Sir John Mandeville translation from a French work marked by fantastical travels, panoramic details of life used as a reference by Christopher Columbus as the figure you all are aware with a distinct literary style tersely phrased narration. So, you can easily understand the implication of the man. Next comes Sir Thomas Mallory. Sir Thomas Mallory is popular for his wonderful creation called Le Mort d'Arthur. Sorry for my Latin pronunciation, 
comp compilation from a number of French romances dealing with the King Arthur and the Knights of the right Round Table. You are familiar with King Arthur already and the Knights of the Round Table. The uniform dignity maintained all through the work suffused with the essence of romance and medieval chivalry. It is an action that deals with adventure stories. So, friends, in this particular module, we try to trace out the different parameters, origin, development and contributions under different heads of middle English romances. We also noted the growth and development of middle English romances with the contributions from John Mandeville and others. We have also looked at different corpuses through a different distinct light literary light. References King Arthur in Antiquity by Graham Anderson, number 2, History of England, volume 1 by S. E. Baugh, number 3, Geoffrey Assey, Geoffrey Monmouth in Lassie Norms, the New Arthurian Encyclopedia, and the and another interesting book, P. J. C. Field, Texts and Sources, Cambridge, Rosemary Morris, The Character of King Arthur, and so on. Friends, do not move away. Here are some audio visual links for you. Thank you. Geoffrey of Monmouth, c. 1100 c. 1155, was a Welsh cleric and one of the major figures in the development of British historiography and the popularity of tales of King Arthur. He is best known for his chronicle, History of the Kings of Britain, which was widely popular in its day and was credited, uncritically, well into the 16th century, being translated into various other languages from its original Latin, but which is now considered unreliable history. Biography Geoffrey was probably born sometime between 1100 and 1110 in Wales or the Welsh Marches. He must have reached the age of majority by 1129, when he is recorded as witnessing the charter. In his Historia, Geoffrey refers to himself as Galfridus Monmutensis, Geoffrey of Monmouth, which indicates a significant connection to Monmouth, Wales, and which may refer to his birthplace. Geoffrey's works attest to some acquaintance with the place names of the region. Two contemporaries, Geoffrey was known as Galfridus Artur us, or variants thereof. The Arthur in these versions of his name may indicate the name of his father, or a nickname based on Geoffrey's scholarly interests. Earlier scholars assumed that Geoffrey was Welsh or at least spoke Welsh. Geoffrey's knowledge of the Welsh language appears to have been slight however, and it is now recognized that there is no real evidence that Geoffrey was of either Welsh or Cambro-Norman descent, unlike for instance, Gerald of Wales. He may have sprung from the same French-speaking elite of the Welsh border country as the writers Gerald of Wales and Walter Mapp, and Robert. Earl of Gloucester, to whom Geoffrey dedicated versions of his Historia Regum Britanni. It has been argued, by Frank Stenton among others, that Geoffrey's parents may have been among the many Bretons who took part in William I's conquest and settled in the southeast of Wales. 
Monmouth had been in the hands of Breton lords since 1075 or 1086 and the names Galfridus and Arthur, if interpreted as a patronymic, were more common among the Bretons than the Welsh. He may have served for a while in a Benedictine priory in Monmouth, but most of his adult life appears to have been spent outside Wales. Between 1129 and 1151 his name appears on six charters in the Oxford area, sometimes styled Magister, Teacher. He was probably a secular canon of Street. George's College All the charters signed by Geoffrey are also signed by Walter, Archdeacon of Oxford, also a canon at that church. Another frequent co-signatory is Ralph of Monmouth, a canon of Lincoln. On the 21st of February 1152, at Lambeth Archbishop Theobald consecrated Geoffrey as Bishop of St. Asaph, having ordained him a priest at Westminster ten days before. There is no evidence that he ever visited his see, writes Lewis Thorpe, and indeed the wars of Owen Gwynedd make this most unlikely. He appears to have died between the 25th of December 1154 and the 24th of December 1155, in 1155 according to Welsh chronicles, when his apparent successor, Richard, took office. Geoffrey wrote several works of interest, all in Latin, the language of learning and literature in Europe during the medieval period. His major work was the History of the Kings of Britain, the work best known to modern readers. It relates the purported history of Britain, from its first settlement by Brutus, a descendant of the Trojan hero Aeneas, to the death of Cadwallader in the 7th century, taking in Julius Caesar's invasions of Britain, two kings, Lear and Cymbeline, later immortalized by William Shakespeare, and one of the earliest developed narratives of King Arthur. Geoffrey claims in his dedication that the book is a translation of an ancient book in the British language that told in orderly fashion the deeds of all the kings of Britain, given to him by Walter, Archdeacon of Oxford. Modern historians have dismissed this claim. It is, however, likely that the Archdeacon furnished Geoffrey with some materials in the Welsh language that helped inspire his work, as Geoffrey's position and acquaintance with the Archdeacon would not have afforded him the luxury of fabricating such a claim outright. Much of it is based on the Historia Britannum, a 9th century Welsh Latin historical compilation, Betty's Historia Ecclesiastica Gintus Anglo-Roman Gildas's 6th century polemic De Exidio et Conquestu Britanni expanded with material from Bardic oral tradition, genealogical tracts, and embellished by Geoffrey's own imagination. In an exchange of manuscript material for their own histories, Robert of Torini gave Henry of Huntingdon a copy of Historia Regum Britanni, which both Robert and Henry used uncritically as authentic history and subsequently used in their own works, by which means some of Geoffrey's fictions became embedded in popular history. Is now acknowledged as a literary work of national myth containing little reliable history. This has since led many modern scholars to agree with William of Newburgh, who wrote around 1190 that, it is quite clear that everything this man wrote about Arthur and his successors, or indeed about his predecessors from Vortigern onwards, was made up, partly by himself and partly by others. Other contemporaries were similarly unconvinced by Geoffrey's history. For example, Heraldus Cambrensis recounts the experience of a man possessed by demons. If the evil spirits oppressed him too much, the Gospel of St. John was placed on his bosom, when, like birds, they immediately vanished, but when the book was removed, and the history of the Britons by Geoffrey Arthur, as Geoffrey named himself, was substituted in its place, they instantly reappeared in greater numbers and remained a longer time than usual on his body and on the book. Geoffrey's major work was nevertheless widely disseminated across the whole of medieval Western Europe. Acton Criscom listed 186 extant manuscripts in 1929, and others have been identified since.
it enjoyed a significant afterlife on a variety of forms, including translations adaptations such as the Anglo-Norman Roman The Brood of Wais, the Middle English Brood of Laemon, and several anonymous Middle Welsh versions known as Brood of the Kings, where it was generally accepted as a true account. Other Writings the earliest of Geoffrey's writings to appear was probably the Prophecies of Merlin, which he wrote at some point before 1135, and which appears both independently and incorporated into the It consists of a series of obscure prophetic utterances attributed to Merlin, which Geoffrey claimed to have translated from an unspecified language. Geoffrey's structuring and reshaping of the Merlin and Arthur myths engendered the vast popularity of Merlin and Arthur myths in later literature, a popularity that lasts to this day. He is generally viewed by scholars as the major establisher of the Arthurian canon. The historious effect on the legend of King Arthur was so vast that Arthurian works have been categorized as pre- or post galfridian depending on whether or not they were influenced by him. The third work attributed to Geoffrey is another hexameter poem, Life of Merlin. The is based much more closely on traditional material about Merlin than are the other works. Here he is known as Merlin of the Woods, or Scottish Merlin, Merlin is Caledonius, and is portrayed as an old man living as a crazed and grief-stricken outcast in the forest. The story is set long after the time frame of S. Merlin, but the author tries to synchronize the works with references to the Mad Prophet's previous dealings with Vortigern and Arthur. They did not circulate widely, and the attribution to Geoffrey appears in only one late 13th century manuscript, but it contains recognizably Galfridian elements in its construction and content, and most critics are content to recognize it as his. In popular culture. In the 2009 BBC series Merlin, the character of Geoffrey of Monmouth was played by Michael Cronin.